here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Travelers by land, sea, or air should know of the great advantages of using Horlicks, either in powder or tablet form. Nothing is more convenient to carry on trips than Horlicks. When no other food will do in cases of seasickness or air sickness, Horlicks can be taken because of its remarkable digestibility. In cases of prolonged illness, it often saves lives. In this connection, may we read a letter recently received from Mrs. E.F.D. of Cincinnati, Ohio. This past winter, Mother and I spent eight weeks touring Florida, and we always had a bottle of Horlicks malted milk tablets in the pocket of the car. Mother would take several every time she felt a bit hungry. They surely helped her, for many times we were not close to a town for luncheon, just at luncheon time. When I tell you that my mother will be 75 next fall and never tired on our 4,500-mile trip, you will see that Horlicks helped. End of quote. You, too, can readily enjoy Horlicks as a food drink while on your trips. It is so convenient to prepare. It already contains full cream milk and only requires that you mix it with water. A light lunch can be prepared in a minute, anywhere, at any time of the day or night. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, the old partnership of Edwards and Peabody, long a familiar firm in Pine Ridge, is no more. Following a heated argument yesterday, the old fellows dissolved partnership. Lum taking over the sole ownership and management of their picture show, the Pine Ridge Planetarium. And Abner assuming full control of the Jot em Down store. The old fellows are convinced that each will be better off without the interference of the other. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find the new proprietor of the Jot em Down store talking with Cedric, who seems to have been thrown in with the trade. Listen. I believe that's our ring, Mr. Abner. Yeah, I'll get it, Cedric. I'll get it. Hello? Peabody's got him down, Thor. Mom? Why, I don't know what the picture is for tonight. You'll have to call Mr. Edwards over at the picture show. I, I ain't connected with that outfit now. No, Mom. I I'm running the jot him down store here now. Yes, ma'am. Any time you need anything in the way of groceries, why, well, I'll be glad to have the business. All right, Miss Kelly. Not at all. Goodbye. Now, I wish they'd quit calling over here about that picture show. You ought to make an announcement over the party line and tell everybody that you and Mr. Lum ain't partners no more. I know that that's a good idea, Cedric. I believe I'll do that right now. That'll put a stop to them calling down here and asking me about the picture show. I just rang a fire alarm rang like Lom does whenever he makes an announcement over the party line. Yes, ma'am. I always get them to the phone all right. I know, but I'll just give them some special prices on groceries, too, while I'm at it. I'm going to show folks around here how a grocery store ought to be run. Special lawn. Uh, uh. Hello? Uh, I mean, uh, this is the jot em down store. Abner Peabody's owner and manager and president and everything else talking. I just want to make an announcement and tell everybody that Lom Edwards is uh, disconnected with his store now, and I ain't responsible for none of his debts from here out. He, he's running a picture show, and I'm running a store here. So from now on, when you want to know something about the picture show, uh, don't call down here and ask me. Call Mr. Lum. And I've got some special prices on, uh, on, uh, on Mike and I everything. And extra special price on bananas. They've been here so long, I've got to get shut of them before they spoil. Well, I'll be calling you up just right now every day. Give me some special this way. Listen for the fire alarm ring. That's a sign of some red hot prices. <laughs> I thank you. <laughs> I don't get that order to get them. Uh, how'd it sound, Cedric? Oh, all right, I reckon. Did I sound as good as Lom does when he makes announcement? Yes, ma'am, I believe you did, but don't tell him I said so, for I'm working for him over there at the picture show of the night, you know. Well, I figured I could make just about as good a speech over that telephone as he could, but he never would let me do it. 
Always had to do the talking themselves. Well, I believe you're going to make a success with the store here, Mr. Abner, the way you start now. Sir. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't need no help from Ron. Yes, sir. You stay with me, Cedric, and I'll make a big marking teal out of you. Make a what out of me? Big marking teal out of you. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. We're going to have make some changes around here, too. Put in some new rules. Yeah. Now, when a customer comes in, Cedric, I want you to always get up on your feet when you ask him what they want. Ooh. Don't just sit there with your feet propped up on the counter like Lom does. And always take your hat off, too, when you go to wait on somebody. And thank them when you get done. Yes, and get the store opened up early. When I come down here every morning, I want to find you sweeping out. Yes, sir. Maybe I better practice you a little bit, Cedric, for there's going to be times when I'll have to leave you here in the store by yourself. Now, I'll make out like I'm a customer coming in the store here, and you show me just how you wait on me. Then I'll give you some pointers. Yes, ma'am. Well, where, where are you going? I'm just going to walk up towards the front of the store here to make out like I'm a customer coming in. Well, you're going out, though. So. Well, I'm going to turn around right here. Here I come now. Yes, ma'am, I see you. Morning, Cedric. Morning. But I done spoke to you this morning once. Yeah, but you ain't saw me yet today, Cedric. Ain't saw you. I mean, we've been sitting here talking for over hours. I you know, Cedric, but I'm a customer. I'm just now coming in the store. Now, let's start over again. Morning, Cedric. Good morning. How are you this morning? Well, all right, I reckon. I haven't thought much about it. Why? <laughs> well, ain't you going to ask me how I am? Well, I just suppose you're all right, or you'd said something about it before now. I ain't me, Cedric. I'm a customer. You want to always ask the customers how they're feeling and all that stuff. Oh, well, how are you feeling? Just fine, thank you. Well, ain't you forgetting something? Huh? Oh, yes, well, right now I forgot. You said you wanted to find me sweeping out when you come down in the morning. I'll have to get the broom out of the Well, room. come back here, Cedric. I'm a customer. I want to buy something. Ain't you going to ask me if I need something? No, Mom. I know you don't need nothing. I, I take me back your stuff over to your place at, late this evening. Miss Peabody called up for oh, it. I for you never goodness, know. Cedric, forget that I'm Abner Peabody. I'm a customer, I told you. Make out like I'm the Winter Abernathy. Oh, <laughs> you couldn't make nobody believe you was her, Mr. Abner. Her and y'all don't look a thing alike. Well, that don't make no difference about that. It don't make no difference who I'm supposed to be. Ezra Seastrunk or Grand Pappy Spears or Moe's Moose, anybody. You mean you want me to guess who you are? No, just say I'm Luke Spears. Oh, you're Luke Spears. No, I mean, just make out like I'm him. See, I come in and you think that I'm Luke Spears. Oh, well, I'd know better than that. Luke ain't even in town. He's over in Oklahoma now. Oh, for goodness sake. Here, you be the customer, and I'll wait on you, Cedric, and show you how it ought to be did. I'm going to get to be it now. Yeah, you step up there in the front and make <laughs> out like you're some customers coming in to buy something. Marshall. Oh, I believe I'm catching on now. Oh, <laughs> run me crazy. This is fun, ain't it? This well, now, is. come in now. Come on in. Good morning. What can I do for you? <laughs> You'll never guess who I am now. <laughs> well, pay attention, Tommy. Huh. I said, what can I do for you? Huh? I said, what can I do for you? Oh, what'd you say? Well, for goodness sake, what's the matter with you? Can't you hear nothing? <laughs> no, Ma, not very good. You see, I'm making out like I'm old Uncle Henry Lunsford, and you know how hard of hearing he is. Oh, <laughs> he might not be. <laughs> well, that don't count, though. I had to tell you that. I'll try it again. Well, come on back here. Now, what can I do for you? You forgot to say good morning. Well, good morning. Good morning. Only I'm an afternoon customer this time. Let's play like it's late evening, nearly quitting time. We ain't playing, Cedric. This is serious. I'm trying to learn you something. Now, what is it for you? Oh, I don't know. Uh, uh, I'd like to look at some nice, fresh calico or gingham. All right, fine. You step this way. Well, I don't know where I can walk that way or not, but I'll try it. Now, now, here's something that'll make a nice little dress. You can make a sunbonnet off of it, too, to match. Oh. Look awful nice. And there's enough goods in that boat to make dresses for the children and shirts for the men folks, too. I've already said there ain't nothing prettier than to see a whole family docked out to match one another that way. See, that sail ship, Cedric. Well, let me look at that boat over there on the first side. That, that sort of yellow one. All right. That's awful pretty, too. There you are. 
Yes, now, let me see that up there on the top shelf, that uh, green pokey dot. Well, wouldn't this in here do, Cedric? Ain't no use for me to climb clean up there. I can show you just as well with one of these down here. No, if I can't see that, and I'll just go on down to Dick Huddleston's store, I guess. Well, what are you trying to do, Cedric? Wear me out? You put me in mind of Sister Simpson. <laughs> I do know. You guessed it your first time. That's just who I was. Oh. <laughs> just let it go. I'll wait on the customers myself. Here. Now, you put this bowl good right back up in the shelves yourself. Well, I'm a customer. I ain't supposed to have to put the stuff back in the shelves after a little Well, bit. we're through making out like you're a customer. You better be making out like you're working here before I get somebody else to take your place. I about give up hopes ever making a clerk out of you. You ought to come with Mr. Dick out there in front. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, now, get that stuff all cleaned up right now, Cedric. I'm, I'm the clerk now, huh? Yeah, I reckon so. Howdy, Dick. Come in. Good morning, Mr. Huddleston. Uh, good morning. What can I do for you? What'd you say, Cedric? I say, what can I do for you? Oh, not a thing, Cedric. Why? Uh, are you a uh, squire skimper? <laughs> no, I'm not guilty. Hey, uh, don't pay no attention to him, Cedric. Hey, she's strong. Now, Cedric, just hash up now. I've been trying to learn him how to wait on the customers here, but I'll give it up. Grandpappy Spears. Uh, Abner, I heard your announcement on the porter line a while ago. I uh, picked up a receiver to see where the fire was, and I understood you to say that you was on the store here by yourself now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Lom well, ain't got a thing to do with this place now. Him and me has runs our partnership. I swapped him my interest in a picture show for his interest in the store here. Well, for goodness sake, when did that happen? Oh, him and me got in a sort of an argument here yesterday. First thing I know, why he had the show and I had the store. You mean you traded even? Yeah, I reckon so. There weren't no boot here. Just signed some papers and that's all there was to it. Well, he gave you a good skinning on that deal, had not he? He did. Why, sure, that picture shows a regular mint. He'll make more money over in six months than you will over here in two years. Well, it's too late now, I reckon. We've done flop. Well, it's not too late either. I bet you he knowed he's getting the best of it all the way through. Come to think about it, he was the one that suggested himself. Well, that blame his on the high. Well, you can't blame Lum about it, Abner. He didn't make you say, did he? No, but I thought I was getting the best of him. Dad blame him anyway. I'm going over that picture show right this minute. I'll make him trade back with me or beat the everlasting daylight out of him. Well, here, wait a minute, Abner. Hold on there. I ain't gonna do it. I don't, and I'll learn him how to try to beat me out of my life that picture show. Mm, there seems to be some dissatisfaction already over the division of properties. Something serious may develop out of this yet. Before we leave the air, here's a tip about Horlick's tablets you may not have thought of. We have received many letters from people working in offices, factories, and stores who enjoy smoking but are unable to smoke while at work. Now, these folks report that Horlick's tablets are especially fine for relieving that craving so many smokers get. Here's the reason for that. Besides being good to eat, Horlick's tablets are extremely sustaining and refreshing. They help you forget the desire for a smoke. So if for any reason you're unable to smoke during working hours, get a flask of Horlick's tablets and take them with you to work. They'll satisfy you, and when you do get a chance to smoke, you'll enjoy it much more. You can get a handy 10-cent flask that's just the thing for carry. Your druggist also has them in larger size flasks, both natural and chocolate flavored. This is Carlton Bricker, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horley, who now bid you all goodbye until tomorrow at this same time.